It's February and in my part of the world it is starting to get a little cooler and so I'm trying desperately to hang on to summer so today I'm making a turquoise necklace to just give me that little bit more of a summer vibe. Welcome back my jewellery making friends, if you're new here my name is Carol. Today I'm going to be using this amazing connector to make a necklace. Now I'm also going to be using some turquoise beads. Let me walk you step by step through the process and I'll talk about everything you need to make this necklace. What you're going to need is the star of the show, this wonderful connector. Now it is quite large and I just love that look, you can see the one that I'm wearing. <laughs> I love this kind of focal thing going on here. All right, so I've got my connector. I have uh, five of these six millimeter jump rings. I've got two little Tibetan silver beads. Now these ones, are they've got a kind of corrugated finish on them. I've got some head pins, five, five centimeter head pins. Now I've got two small pieces of chain that are five centimeters or two inches long. That is a 5.5mm uh, chain. I've got a toggle clasp and I have some 20 gauge uh, half hard wire. As far as beads are concerned, I have some 3mm balls. I've got these amazing faceted cubes. These ones are red and they have an AB finish. I've got some 4mm beaded rondelles or daisy spacer beads. I have these pumpkin beads. These are made from Czech glass. And I've got these gorgeous magnesite ovals. And I have five of these teeny weeny five millimeter bead caps as well. You'll need some um, flush cutters. I'm going to be using my one step looper to make the loops, but if you don't have a one step looper, you can use your round nose pliers, and I'll be using those as well. Uh, you will need two pairs of chain nose pliers and I'm actually going to be using my crimping pliers, but I'm using them in an unusual way. So I will talk you through that as well. If you want to make this necklace, I will leave you a link in the description box below to a blog post that contains all of the materials that you need. And also watch to the end of the video because I am going to leave you a discount code right at the end that will get you 10% off these beads as well. They're all available in our store. The first thing I'm going to do is make the dangles for the connector. I'm going to take one of my head pins and I'm going to pop on one of my bead caps there. So I'm going, I'm popping that on from the bottom up so that it's kind of cupping upwards so that it will cup the bead here. So there we go. Next I'm going to put on one of my little daisy spacers and one of my three millimeter balls. That's what I have and now I'm going to make a bend in the top of the wire now I'm putting my thumbnail on top of that uh, bit that top bead and I'm just going to bend that over now normally when I make a wire wrapped loop I, le I like to leave a little bit more space than that but today I'm actually only going to be wrapping it around just a little bit so I don't want a huge space now I'm going to pop my chain nose pliers in there sorry my round nose pliers in there and I'm going to wrap the wire around, turn my pliers and wrap again. Now if you haven't made a wire wrapped loop before, I will leave you a link in the description box and also a card at the top to a video on how to do that. Now you'll see that I pulled that with my pliers. The reason for that is I didn't quite get it tight enough around my round nose pliers and I wanted to make sure that it was nice and tight. So that's what I have now. Now I'm going to remove my pliers and holding the loop, I'm going to take my second pair of chain nose pliers and I'm going to wire wrap this. So just taking the end there and going around. All right. So there we have our wire wrapped loop and I need to cut off the end. So taking my uh, flush cutters and I will just get right in there as close as I can and snip off that end, making sure I'm holding it so that it doesn't fly away. Now I've got a little tail sticking out, I'm not sure if you can see that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going, actually going to take my crimping pliers 
and squeeze it down. Now the reason I use my crimping pliers for this is, well there's two reasons. Firstly, they're nice and fine, they're not very fat so that they, you can get right in there. And secondly, with the uh, shape of them, they push the wire around so it actually tucks it in really nicely. So I'm just kind of moving around and making sure that that end is nicely tucked in. Just straighten it up a little bit, it's a bit crooked. Here we go. So there is my first little component of my dangle. Next I'm going to take a piece of wire and just cutting a piece off. And I'm going to use my one step looper and I'm going to make a loop in the end. Now if you haven't used a one step looper before, they are an amazing invention which does the cut and the loop all in one. And I have a video all about how to use one, so I'll leave that for you in the description box. And also, um, I'll leave you a video on how to make a loop without using a one step looper, it's just so that you, in case you don't have one. Okay. So there's my loop and I am going to thread on one of my little balls and one of my faceted large beads here, red beads, and another ball. Okay, like that. And now I'm going to make a loop in the top. If you've got a lot of loops to make, the one step looper makes it really fast and easy. So there's that component. Now I'm going to join the two together. So just taking my chain nose pliers here and I'm going to get the loop on the side that opens, which is this side here, and holding it on the side I'm going to push my hand down so that it opens the loop. I'm going to pop on that component, little dangle, and then I'm going to just reverse that. Now if you don't get it close first time, you can wiggle up and down, pushing towards the wire this way, just so that it, until it closes. There's my component now, my dangle, and now I'm going to attach it to the connector. I'm going to do that in exactly the same way by opening the side that of the loop that opens. Now when you put it on your connector you need to make sure that you put it on the right way so that the opening is, is, is at the back. Now I'm going to repeat that four more times so that I have five, connect five dangles on my connector. So there's my connector, isn't it beautiful? I love how the red beads bring out the red in the connector. It's just gorgeous. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a jump ring on the top of that connector. So just taking my jump ring and my two pairs of chain nose pliers and opening my jump ring. If you haven't done this before, I'll leave you a video, a link for a video on how to do this as well. Just making sure it's nicely closed. I want it to be really well closed so that it doesn't fall off. So there it is with its jump ring. Okay, next I'm going to take some wire and I'm going to make it the little component that goes at the top of the uh, connector in the center. Just taking my wire, I'm going to make a loop in one end. Just double checking that it's nicely closed. I haven't got it quite the bend I want, so just making sure that that's happening as well. There's my loop, and now I'm going to thread on one of my little 3mm ball beads, and one of my Tibetan silver beads, and another 3mm ball. 
I'm going to thread on the jump ring another three millimeter ball another the other Tibetan silver one and one more of my little three millimeter balls and now I'm going to make a loop in the end. So there it is, and what I'm going to do is just bend that so that it's got a little V in it. So just popping that aside, and the next component I'm going to make is using just some wire and my one step looper again. So just taking some more wire. What I'm going to thread on next is one of my little balls, one of my beaded rondelles, a pumpkin bead, a three millimeter ball, one of my big red beads, another three millimeter ball. <laughs> pumpkin, a beaded rondelle, and lastly another little ball. And now I'm going to make a loop in the top. So I find when you make, when you use your one step looper, it's quite useful to kind of push on the end here, on the end loop, so that you get it nice and close. If you're using glass beads, you don't want it too close because it can damage the beads. So there's my connector now, and I am going to add that to my part here that I just created, my main necklace. Just opening up that loop. on this loop. Actually, this loop's not quite closed. I might close this one properly first. There you go. Popping that on and closing that loop up. we have. Now I need to make uh, another four, three of those so I'll go ahead and do that and uh, I'll connect one and then I'll show you how I'm going to connect the others. There's my necklace so far, isn't it pretty? I just love this inclusion of this red. Alright so next I've also made two more connectors so that I can use those for later on. Next I'm going to make the component using these long beads here and I'm going to start off with a loop in my wire. I've already done one because I actually did one too many <laughs> and I'm going to pop on one of my little uh, balls and one of my beaded rondelles. Then I'm going to pop on my one of my big beads, another beaded rondelle and three millimeter ball and I'm going to make a loop in this one. And I need to make two of those so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay so there I have both of my components and now I'm going to join them on to my necklace. So just taking my chain nose pliers 
and opening my loop there, popping it on, and closing it up. And the same on the other side. This is our necklace so far. Now we're going to add these extra components onto though that end. It's not quite closed, so just making sure that it is. I also, when I've finished a piece, I always go back and check that all my loops are closed properly because sometimes when you're in the middle of doing something, it's really easy just to not quite close it. You know, leave it just that slight bit open and you do not want your um, pieces coming undone. Okay, so there we go, there it is. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is add the chain. Now, as I said, I've got two pieces of chain here that are five centimetres long. I think that's two inches. Two and a half centimetres per inch, yes, that's right. <laughs> and now I'm going to take a jump ring and I'm going to open it. And now I'm going to add on my necklace and one the end link of one of my pieces of chain here. And close that up. And just repeating that for the other side. That's what we have and now we're going to attach the clasp and I'm going to do that in exactly the same way so just taking my jump ring opening it and threading on my one side of my clasp and the end of the chain now if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see more it would be really really wonderful if you would subscribe to the channel and that way it helps the channel grow and I, it helps me to be able to bring you more tutorials. So just taking that one and opening it. The reason I used a toggle, toggle clasp here is because if you watched my bohemian necklace tutorial, I made an extender chain with a toggle clasp and I really wanted to be able to wear this necklace in two lengths. So I thought if I used a toggle clasp, I could use that same extender chain on this necklace as well. So there's my necklace on, isn't it stunning? I know that I'll be wearing this one a lot. I absolutely love it. Now you've been waiting for that discount code. The code to get 10% off all of the materials you need to make this necklace is turquoise. So just enter that into the discount box when you check out from our website. If you're interested in making the necklace I was wearing before, the boho one, then I'll leave you a link in the description box below to that. Also remember we're on Facebook and Instagram. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.